Hi, this is Kareem and you are watching Oversliced. In today's video, I will show you how to create a dishwasher magnet, a two-sided dishwasher magnet which says clean on one side and dirty on the other. We'll first start with a rough draft sketch of what this will look like. Uh, of course, this is going to be a rectangular shape with, uh, with rounded corners. It will have holes um, for two magnets. The magnets that we are using are 10 millimeter uh, in diameter and two millimeter in height. We will also round the corners. Um, for this particular design, um, it ended up being 120 millimeters by 30 millimeters. And um, we'll space the magnets um, 80 millimeters from each other, um, from the center, uh, 40 millimeters on each side. For this project, I'll be using FreeCAD version 0.17. FreeCAD is a free and open source 3D CAD software that is available on all platforms. Let's start by creating a body and in select the workbench to part designer and create a sketch in the XY plane. Let's create a rectangle. And one thing that I like to do early on is to symmetrize my rectangle across the X, Y axis. Let's give it a height of 30 millimeters and a length of 120 millimeters. Okay, that looks good. We'll close this sketch, go ahead and pad this for 1.5 millimeters. Okay. Select the top face, create a sketch, and then we, we will link a corner edge here. So so that we can constrain against it. And we'll create an arc. That connects both of those edges. Let's go ahead and uh, give it an angle of 90 degrees and make it tangent to one of the sides. And this will automatically make, uh, tan uh, make it tangent to the other side. Let's go ahead and give it a radius of 10 millimeters or one centimeter. Let's go ahead and complete this structure, this sketch, so that it's fully constrained. Now, you will notice that FreeCAD complains about redundant constraints, and that is because we have a coincidence constraint here and we have a fixed point onto an object here and we also have a vertical constraint so one of so if we get rid of the vertical constraint let's see did that do no let's just select okay let's remove the let's remove the one that it doesn't like okay now There is one degree of um, freedom. And that okay, here it is. See, there, these two are not connected. If I apply the coincidence, and that should do it. Okay, great. Close this guy. Go ahead and 
pocket it out. So now we have one corner rounded. Now we could go ahead and do this on all the remaining three sides, but instead of doing that, we will use that pocket as a feature and apply two mirrors, one in the horizontal uh, and one in the vertical. Uh, and since we are applying two mirrors, we could use the multi-transform feature instead of applying two mirrors individually. Uh, let's select the pocket. Actually, cancel out of this one. Go into the body. With pocket selected, let's do this. Okay, this is better. Right, click in the transformations, add mirror twice. You'll already see it applied in the um, vertical across the vertical axis. Let's go ahead and change the second one to horizontal sketch axis in, the, in that plane. And that should give us our rounded corners. Okay, there. Let's go ahead and um, save this. So I already had this file created, but let's go ahead and overwrite it place it yes <clears throat> this way we don't lose our work uh, if the application crashes so this was our okay and then let's go ahead and flip this around on the other side and create the two holes that we need for the magnets remember the magnet has a diameter of one centimeter and a height of two millimeters so let's go ahead and create two circles so that the center touches the x-axis. And you can tell that when it creates this uh, constraint indicator. And then to simplify this, let's go ahead and make them both equal. That just means that the radius of one uh, of, of both of them will be the same. You just have to apply it to one. Let's go ahead and apply the radius of 5 point that will give us actually not 6.5 5.5 and that will give us the effective diameter of 11 millimeters now see how I can move one uh, and the other one is stationary let's go ahead and symmetrize the centers of both now if I move one the other one will move with it Let's go ahead and keep them 80 millimeters apart. There you go. Looks good. Let's close this. Now let's pocket out one millimeter from here. Let's go ahead and save it. Let's look at it here. And let's go to the top surface. And we'll fill it. Create a fillet on it. Actually, no, we won't, don't want to create a fillet. We want to create a chamfer instead. That way we get a 45 degree cut because this, the top face and the side faces are perpendicular to each other. And that way we don't have a, a sharp edge. Okay, now that we have the base plate ready, let's work on the text so I am going to let's do top view and for this let's create a new body and create okay let me just delete this to be on the safe side there you go let's rename this base plate Let's switch over to the draft workbench and I'm going to hide our base plate for now. In the draft workbench, we will create a text string. We'll leave it, we'll enter at uh, global XYZ of zero. Let's go ahead and create the first text of clean height. One, we'll leave it as is for now. Tracking, leave it as zero. Notice and regular. 
There you go. Now, to get the reference of our size, okay, there you go. Let's flip this over so we can play with the size. Fit all, zoom. So let's go to the shape here, size. If I increase this to 10, it's a little under 20 it's to 12. Let's try 12 and move, enter point and We'll just eyeball it here. There you go. And let's change the name to clean. Let's copy that and change it to dirt. Dirty. And change the text to dirty as well. Let's hide clean and we will need to reposition this. So it is actually it's moving the other guy. Here you go. Move. Move. Enter and eyeball it to well you know what I think yeah. This looks better. Okay. Clean and dirty. Let's uh, change this to clean. We'll rename it to 001 because you can only have unique names. And that's fine. Let's go ahead and hide the base plate. Hide dirty. Select clean. And while we are here, let's change the workbench to part workbench and we will use the extrude selected sketch along the normal is fine along the z-axis it'll be along the z-axis and let's change the length give it 0 0.5 so we have a thin layer go ahead and extrude ok if I look at it at from the front and you can barely see it. Uh, there you go. Extrude, rename this to clean EXD. Let's repeat that for so let's um, okay, we actually don't need this guy. Let's repeat that for dirty. Change it to 0 0.5 and OK. So have clean, make it um, 30 EXT. OK. Bring the base plate back. Now, if you remember, the base plate is 1.5 millimeters in height. The Clean and dirty plates, uh, the names, labels rather, are half a millimeter high. Let's go ahead and move them one millimeter in the Z. There you go. So that they are on the surface and they are half a millimeter deep. If we Flip it around. Okay. Good. We will save this. Yes. And now it's time to export. What we will do is let's go ahead and select the feature inside the main body base plate. Let's call it 
base plate 001 is fine and then select clean with both of them selected to an export leave the type uh, to additive manufacturing format and this will come in handy in the next step let's do this clean side and unselect select 30 export 30 side okay and that should do it save this and we will now move to the slicer for the next step we will move to slicer prusa edition version 1.4 1.2 the newer version is available at this time but um, my machine is configured for this particular uh, version so we will use this one uh, this version has good support for multi-material printing and I have uh, already configured my 3d printer and um, the necessary settings uh, in slicer so let's move on Let's select our files here, clean side and dirty side, open. Prusa prompts us that it thinks this might be a multi-part object, which it is. So let's go ahead and do yes. It's the same prompt for the second file because we've opened two files at the time. So yes, there. It's position them there. Let's go ahead and do this. Actually, arrange this should be let's start with the clean side select it go to settings now you see we have base plate this is the, these are the names of the objects that we exported so this should help us identify them correctly um, before we do that let me show you so I on my printer I have four extruders um, with four filaments currently the first one first extruder is set up to the gold PLA second one is white third one is black fourth one is red we will be printing the base plate in white and the text in black which means extruder second and third so let's start with the clean side settings base plate see here extruder number two leave the type to part and then the clean this is no longer this is not a part but we will use a modifier instead which and we will change this to three. Okay. And let's take a preview and you can see in the preview. Let's uh, do the same for the, you can either select it from the menu on, on the right hand side or you can select the object directly. And if I double click the object, it will open up the settings same thing here base plate 2 text modifier 3 okay so far so good preview it looks good let's move the perch tower away here for now and we will not print it like this we will actually print it face down uh, the reason being there are holes for the magnets so let's select them one at a time, rotate along Y, 180 degrees. Second one, rotate along Y, 180 degrees. And you can barely see it, but that's how it's going to look. Go back to your preview. And you see the black here. And recall, we only have the text um, half a millimeter deep and that is uh, the plate itself is 1.5 millimeters and the hole is one millimeter so that is that's why you're seeing a little bit of black where the hole ends uh, because that's that layer that you're seeing is is how deep the text is going to be and it doesn't it. it's going to, it should give us a good two layers my 
settings are let's let's see what the printer settings are 0.3 let's can change that to 25 0.25 so that should give us two layers so now the only thing that is left is to export the G code file and set it up on the printer export a GB file and we'll call this clean dirty magnet save it this will take us about an hour to print and the reason for that is um, my printer is tuned to lower speeds and let's send it to the printer We have both these plates, base plates ready. They both have holes in the back. So now we'll take the two magnets. Place them in the slots. Take this hot glue gun and place them. And we'll just glue them together. And to test it, I have this metal ruler. Works good on the one side, works good on the other side, and this is ready. And that's how we created the dishwasher magnets that says clean on one side and dirty on the other side. If you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time.